building a gaming PC for under 300 euros that can keep up with most current games? No worries, it will even look like this in the dark. I was just randomly browsing one day and stumbled upon the AliExpress motherboard CPU and memory combinations. I quickly found a motherboard CPU and memory combination that looked interesting from the brand Moogle, then went for a cheap CPU cooler from the brand Igo, and lastly for a 256GB SSD from the brand PU Skill. As buying a case with tempered glass didn't seem like a good idea I went all the way to the Amazon to buy a case. For this, I chose the Montec X3 Mesh MIDI Tower case. When the case arrived, I immediately wanted to start the build, but that made me wonder, are you even subscribed to the channel? After waiting for quite some time, finally also the motherboard CPU and memory combination arrived together with the SSD and the CPU cooler. This meant it was time for the build. The motherboard came with this handy little bracket already for the CPU cooler which is really handy for mounting basically any cooler on here of course. Then next to that in the box we have the two sticks of 8GB DDR4 memory, the IO shield of the motherboard, and of course the motherboard with CPU already mounted in place. The CPU in this case is a Intel Xeon E52680V4 version. This version has 14 cores and 28 threads, which outperforms an Intel Core i7-9700K by 24% in Passmark. Seems like a very good CPU to do some gaming on as well. First, we install both the DDR4 memory sticks here on the motherboard. I went for a dual channel configuration here, as this is preferred in my eyes for gaming. I'm installing them here in the gray slots, but it turned out that we actually need to have them installed in the black slots. As there was no manual, I thought, hey, there is a 50% chance I have it right. But still, I had it wrong here. Then after that, I went ahead and installed the plastic bracket for the CPU cooler, before I apply the thermal paste to the CPU itself. After applying a small dab of thermal paste, I went ahead and installed the CPU cooler on here. To mount the CPU cooler, I actually had to use quite some force, not really something I like to do, but hey, at least it is mounted firmly that way, so that is okay. Then mounting the NVMe SSD into the M.2 slot in the motherboard, and we can start to build this motherboard into the case. Before you put the motherboard in the case, make sure you always place the I.O. shield first. If you forget to place this, you might end up having to take everything out, which is just a pain to do after building the whole computer. I do think this is the reason why you sometimes see a PC for sale without the I.O. shield. These AliExpress motherboards seem to always come without a BIOS battery. I'm placing one here. I think it has to do with the fact of shipping which has different restrictions when it comes to battery. Now I will connect all the cables to the motherboard that are needed. Cables such as the USB or front audio are always quite easy to locate on the motherboard, but the cables for the power button and so on were a bit harder than expected, as there was no manual. In case you buy this exact motherboard, just know the two pins coated with black are for the power button. To place the power supply I had to wiggle it past the hard disk bracket that is also there. This power supply does fit good here, but required some persuasion to get into place. The power supply I bought second hand, and this is the OCZ 500 watt modular power supply, which was only 25 euros. Second hand. They say the AliExpress ones are okay, but I just don't feel comfortable with that always connected to the power. Then from a previous build, I still had this NVIDIA GTX 1080 Founders Edition laying around. This one I bought some time ago for 100 euros second hand and really works great. These older flagship cards might sound old, but this particular model performs about as good as the RTX 2060 Super, which is a lot more expensive second hand. All we need to do now is plug in the cables of the power supply and then our build is complete. Time to test it and install Windows. The installation of Windows went smooth, but as I did it at night it really showcases the cool RGB fans that this case has. Doesn't it just look super cool like this? There is a button on the top to turn off the RGB lights of all the case fans by the way. So you aren't always stuck with this much light if it doesn't feel good to you. I installed some games and quickly went to testing. The first game I installed was World of Warcraft Classic. I know this game is really old, but with the new expansions it is so much fun to play that I started playing it again. This PC is running this without any issue on 4K resolution with everything set to high. During playing the GPU pulled a total of 190 watts at some point, but didn't get too hot and the average frame rate of this turned out to be 87 frames per second. Isn't that impressive for a build of less than 300 euros? After that I started to play Counter-Strike 2, also, again, on 4K with all settings to medium-high. 
This was perfectly playable at an average of 76 frames per second. Still what amazes me is that you can get this good performance on such an old card in this hardware. Most people inside an AliExpress build always go for the RX 580 GPU but the 1080 GTX is a lot better. And currently you can find them secondhand close to the same price on eBay if you keep an eye on the deals there. Let's have a quick look at some games and how they performed on this PC. The below are the games I've tested on 4K as well. Valorant on high settings got 242 frames per second on high. League of Legends got 85 frames per second on very high. GTA 5 ran with 33 frames per second on Ultra. Keep in mind this is a 4K resolution, but if you want it playable, I would suggest lowering your settings. And then last Dota 2, which ran on best looking with 74 frames per second. Isn't it amazing what you can build for less than 300 euros with new and secondhand parts? Who said PC gaming is expensive when you can have this performance on 4K resolution? Thank you all very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel for more great videos.